Hello, my name is Richard and uh, I'm a managing editor at Duai. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about questionable publishers and uh, different ways to spot them. Uh, during the last couple of years I've uh, handled quite a lot of applications. Uh, some of them were submitted by a serious, or most of them were submitted by serious publishers, uh, but some of them came from uh, questionable ones as well. Um, in the beginning it wasn't that easy to tell them apart, but after a while you learn to spot different characteristics. Um, after having seen this presentation, my goal is that uh, you also should be able to uh, tell a serious publication from a questionable one. To start with, what is a questionable publisher? Uh, how do we define it? Uh, Usually a questionable publisher is said to be one who charges a fee from an author without delivering the services uh, that one would uh, generally expect. Uh, mostly peer review and editorial control. Uh, and this means uh, that insufficient peer review and in some cases no peer review at all is taking place. Why are questionable publishers a problem? Uh, first off, questionable practices is not only a problem for open access journals, as is sometimes suggested. Uh, some subscription journals also engage in uh, questionable practices. Uh, the main problem with questionable publishers is uh, that they may pollute the scientific record uh, with non-peer-reviewed articles. So how do you spot a questionable publisher? Um, there are some signs that you might have encountered a questionable publisher that are relatively easy to notice. Uh, first off, uh, the website. Do they list non-standard uh, impact factors? Uh, I.e. not the uh, journal impact factor from Clarivate Analytics. Uh, here we're referring to made-up impact factors, but also non-standard uh, indexing services. And anonymity. Uh, do they list contact persons or personnel on the site? Uh, do they have a postal address uh, and or an email address? The journal, uh, the journal in itself, uh, how does the title sound? Does the title include words like American or uh, European without uh, having any real relation to the continent in question? Uh, does the title and scope uh, combine uh, subjects that usually don't go too well together like uh, International journal of, uh, journal of Business, Technology and Aesthetics? Uh, or is it just very broad in scope? Uh, then we have marketing. Do they advertise uh, uh, fast publication times uh, or relatively low publication fees? Uh, does collecting APCs seem to be the main purpose of the journal? Um, this is also about the general impression you get from the website. Does, uh, does the presentation seem to be aimed uh, at uh, authors uh, rather than readers. Editorial board. Uh, do you or your colleagues recognize uh, the editorial board members that are listed on the site? Uh, and what's the structure of the board? For example, uh, does the editor-in-chief, is the editor-in-chief the same person as the owner or publisher? And uh, last but not least, uh, we have peer review. Uh, is the peer review process uh, thoroughly described on the site? Uh, and if so, does it seem like they know what they're talking about? Having looked for the signs uh, that I just listed, uh, my hope is that you should also be able to make a decision on whether or not the journal in front of you is uh, trustworthy. Uh, some resources that might come in handy when you, uh, when you need to make such decisions are uh, the ThinkCheck submit site, and also the DOAJ community curated whitelist. Thanks for watching.